So we're talking about price elasticity of demand, which is the responsiveness to price changes. How strong is the response? If you have what we call elastic demand, price elasticity of demand, that means there's going to be a strong response to a change in price. Whereas uh, if, it's, if it's inelastic demand, then that means that there's going to be a weak response to a change in price. So um, I usually talk about prescription drugs here. If you need prescription drugs and the manufacturer decides to raise the price, you're not going to be very sensitive to that. It's a prescription, you need it, so you're going to buy it anyway. Likewise, if the price drops a lot, you're not going to go out and stock up on prescription drugs because you really only buy them when you need them. Okay, so that's kind of a real easy example. When you think of inelastic demand, think of prescription drugs. So that is the Rx, prescription drugs. Now here's the formula that we're going to use to arrive at the coefficient of elasticity. You take the percent change in quantity demanded of product X over the percent change in the price of product X. So this basically works out as stuff over money. So that's how it's kind of easy to remember. Stuff over money. Okay? Um, and that's going to give you, that's going to kind of give you the good math. So you always got to remember what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. Stuff is in the numerator. Money is in the denominator. So there's a bit of a problem. So if we have one, uh, one demand curve, say, okay, and your demand looks like this, there's actually different elasticities at different points. So we said that it's a change, right? Well, you can imagine if you go from here to here, um, you're going sort of down, and here to here, you're going up. So since we're using percentage changes, you can imagine if this is 10 and, and this is 5, right? And you'll forgive the uh, not being the scale. But here what we've got is a 50% decrease or a 100% increase. So that's problematic since we're using the percent change in price on the, in the denominator, it gets really goofy um, unless we come up with some sort of way to figure things out. And the way we do that is by using what we call the midpoint formula. It takes away the fact that if we use if we don't use the midpoint formula and all we talk about is change, then we wind up with a different elasticity if we're going from a high price to a low price than if we're going from a low price to a high price. That would be problematic. This, by taking the sum of the quantities and dividing by two, it gives us the average. Okay, so that's the idea behind the midpoint. Now, we'll just remember that we're going to use percentages. That gives us a unit-free measure. Um, and it helps us compare our responsiveness across products. So we can compare, you know, milk to bowling balls, even though they're very different. But if one has a, has a different elasticity than the other, then we know what, the, what that means. Also, we're going to use absolute value. So you can ignore the signs for elasticity of demand. Now, if our coefficient is greater than 1, then we're going to call that demand elastic. If it is equal to 1, we're going to call it unit elastic. That's a very rare case. Um, or if, if it is less than 1, then that's going to be inelastic. Um, and then we have our perfect uh, elasticities, which we'll talk about in a second. So um, let's see what this looks like uh, from a perfect, perfectly inelastic. So what that means is imagine, and you'll excuse my dog barking in the background, Imagine that the price rises from 3 to 10, okay? What quantity demanded did not change at all. What that means is that there is absolutely zero sensitivity to the change in price, okay? So that's an extreme case. What that means is, you know, the price went up by triple, and the quantity demanded didn't change at all. Likewise, here, what we get is perfect uh, something that's perfectly elastic. So we had perfect in, perfectly inelastic before. Now this is perfectly elastic. So our price didn't change at all, but our quantity changed a great deal. So we have no change in price at all, 
but a great change in quantity. All right, so we're going to use the total revenue test to help figure this out, okay? So this is one of the real useful things. If you don't need to find the coefficient, then this helps. And, and, and mentally, I think it just makes a lot of sense. So if we have inelastic demand, then price and total revenue move in the same direction, okay? So when the price goes up, total revenue goes up, which means that businesses are going to have an incentive to raise their price. But if it's elastic demand, then when price goes up, total revenue is going to move in the opposite direction. It's going to go down. So that means that businesses have an incentive to lower their price because by lowering their price, they're going to sell so many more units that the extra units will overcome the decreased revenue per unit because you're getting so many more units sold in total. So let's see what that looks like graphically. So um, right here, you have, remember that, that total revenue is always going to be an area under a curve. So you've got, if you're selling at $2 and you sell 10 units, then that gives you the area of this would be 20. Okay, so $20 in this example. There's no unit here, there's a dollar sign here, so that gives us $20. Now, if we move to a different point, okay, and we look down here, if we drop the price down to one dollar then we're gonna sell all these extra units we're gonna sell 40 units so now we have one times 40 giving us a total revenue of 40 so the area of the blue square is bigger than the area of the yellow square which means that total revenue went up when we lowered the price and that's going to be true when we have elastic demand now, on the inelastic demand, if you lower prices from $4 to roughly a dollar, now you can see that we sell a few more units, but not enough to overcome the decrease uh, in price. So we sell for about $3 less, okay, and we only sell 10 more units. So now we have total revenue of 20 at the lower price when we had total revenue of 40 at the higher price. So here, businesses are not going to have a very much incentive to lower their prices. Of course, this is total revenue, and without cost figures, we can't do much because businesses aren't interested just in maximizing revenue. Of course, they're interested in uh, maximizing profit. Then, of course, here we have unit elasticity. So at $3, we sell 10. We lower it down to 1, and we sell 30. That means that it doesn't particularly matter. Sorry about this. This isn't quite to scale. Uh, it looks like the, the squares all got kind of knocked off their schedule with the PowerPoint. So, All right, so um, what you're going to see now is I told you before that we have different elasticities along different points of a curve. Okay, so if you've got you know, just your standard thing, you're going to have a different elasticity at coefficient at A than you have at B. And you see that here. So this is the quantity of tickets demanded per week in the thousands. So if we charge $8 for movies, we're going to sell 1,000 tickets. If we charge one, then we're going to sell 8,000 tickets. And you can see that we have all these different elasticity coefficients. Okay, so we can work this math out. You get the change, right? So you, your percent change from 8 to 7 in money. So that goes in the denominator. And then your percent change in stuff from 1 to 2, that goes in the numerator. And that's going to give you 5, okay? Um, and now let's see what that looks like graphically. What that means, so you have all these different things, um, all these different points, okay? So this is $8, $7, $6, etc. And as you see the, uh, the coefficients graphed out, here we are in the elastic region. Okay, so that corresponds to right here. Here we have our coefficients greater than 1, that's elastic. Then we get to the point of unit elasticity, which is where our coefficient is equal to 1. And then in the lower right portion of the curve, we have our inelastic region. So what that means basically is the lower price gets, the more inelastic we're probably getting. Okay, so other than the perfectly vertical, oops, the perfectly vertical and the perfectly horizontal, um, which do have constant elasticity coefficients, 
other than those situations, we're going to have different elasticity coefficients at different points on the line. Now, we'll compare this to the total revenue test. Our total revenue is rising as we lower the price while we are in the elastic zone of this graph. Then we hit the unit elastic, which is where our total revenue maxes out. And once again, I'm sorry, this has shifted just a little bit. And then in the inelastic region, if we continue to lower our price, then our total revenue is going to fall. Once again, this isn't profit, but eventually we will bring profit into this after we talk more about cost. So here is our summary of elasticity of demand. Okay, so greater than one, you are elastic, and that means that quantity demand changes by a larger percentage than price. And then on our total revenue, as we increase price, total revenue decreases. As we decrease price, total revenue increases. And then you see this, this chart is going to be very useful. All right, now, of course, we have to learn the determinants. What makes something more or less elastic or inelastic? So substitutability. The more substitutes there are, the more elastic demand is. So Coke and Pepsi. If you believe that, that Coke and Pepsi are good substitutes for each other, then as soon as the price of Pepsi changes, even if you prefer Coke when they're the same price, you're going to switch, then that would mean that, the, that you're going to have a high, a, uh, a high coefficient of elasticity. If there's lots of substitutes, then elastic demand. Proportion of income. So let's imagine that staples get a little bit more expensive. So right now a staple costs about a hundredth of a penny, right? So if it becomes two hundredths of a penny, is that going to change the number of staples you use? No, because that is such a small portion of your income. However, when you are buying a car, which would be a relatively high proportion of your income, if the price of that goes up by that same amount, right? So the price doubled of staples, um, if the price of cars doubled, that would dramatically, inc uh, dramatically change, I imagine, your purchasing of that car. Okay, so luxuries and necessities. Necessities tend to be more inelastic. You need them, so if the price rises, you still buy, whereas luxuries are easy to forego. They tend to be elastic. And then time. If there's lots of time, then demand is going to be elastic. But when you don't have the luxury of time, you're going to wind up making decisions out of necessity. So time kind of overlaps with the necessity versus luxury. You hear, I'm sure you've heard the term, the luxury of time. Um, that, that kind of plays in here as well. So here are some examples of coefficients of elasticity. I'm sure some of these make perfect sense and others surprise you. You know, maybe this idea of baseball being pretty, uh, so this is below one, so it's pretty inelastic. Maybe that makes good sense to you, right? If you want to watch pro baseball, you only got a handful of choices, right? Certainly in this area, you really have one. Um, now, if you consider high school baseball a good substitute, then all of a sudden there's lots of choices. So clearly, if we're inelastic, then that means that most people do not consider high school baseball or even things like the Grizzlies and the Rascals particularly good substitutes. And they must feel that it's pretty important. They wouldn't consider their baseball tickets uh, as luxuries, they consider them a little bit closer to necessities. And, you know, there's plenty of other examples there. Um, we're going to kind of skip this for now, and that is going to finish us up for this section. We'll go into elasticity of supply next. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Take care.